and I am recording on my main camera as well. Check, check. All right, we're up. Sorry about that, guys. That was a uh, a pebcac moment. If you don't know what pebcac stands for, it stands for problem exists between keyboard and chair, i.e., me. <laughs> I thought I had um, this Ustream producer sorted out, but uh, no. There you go. I'm recording to Ustream as well. Yep, I'm recording to Ustream as well. So, I think. Ah, there. Start start recording. There we go. Alright, so just a final check. I am recording the chat window on the other computer. I am recording on my main HD camera here. And, oh, which needs some more audio. Gain, hang on. I've got my webcam clipped onto my main blog camera, so let me just uh, increase my um, audio again here, my mic level. Let's just check, check, using the internal mic, check, check, all this technical stuff. It's a pain in the ass. Alright, check, that'll do. Happy with that. So there we go. Woo. I now have the webcam and the main camera. And I am recording in. Um, hang on. Okay. Oh, sorry. I am transmitting in um, 640 by 480. So. I did a test the other day. I did a Ustream test using Ustream Producer, and uh, as it turns out, the um, this seems to be the best frame rate I'm using. Five oh, 500 kbits per second upload speed. So I'm using half of my upload speed. Um, I can go a bit higher, push it a bit higher, but the line drops out, and I'm doing 30 frames per second apparently. So how's the frame rate? Give me a thumbs up. Quality is very good. Firewalker. Yeah, the Manfrotto is good. It's not an 055. It's a uh, Manfrotto Moto. Looks pretty good. Thumbs up. 5x5. Five five, great quality. You must have... Yeah I, yeah, I paid for it. I paid my 199 bucks, And I got Ustream Producer Pro. So, um, I'm now able to tweak the... Um, uh, tweak the upload uh, uh, encoder so I can tweak the bit rate, I can tweak the quality, I can tweak um, stereo or mono, all that sort of stuff. Um, oh, actually, that reminds me, I'm transmitting in stereo, I don't need to be doing that. Heh, here we go, I'm mucking around with my. If, if you haven't seen it, oh, oh, yeah, alright, I'm mucking around with my camera already. But here you go, I showed people the other day. Here's the uh, settings. I can actually modify the uh, the settings here, and I'm transmitting in stereo. So let me transmit in mono. At 64 audio is 64 kbits per second, 48 kilohertz uh, sample rate, and 640 by 480, 30 frames per second, 500 kbits per second main profile. Um, so I'm gonna check. So there we go, it'll save a bit of bandwidth. There's no problem transmitting in, uh, there's no point transmitting in stereo when um, I can transmit in mono. Really? No advantage. <clears throat> so, is there any difference in the audio? The audio should be the same. I'm using my webcam audio, so it may not be, it may not be the best. May not be the duck's guts, but uh, it's good enough for the live stream anyway. Yeah, the ads are annoying. Sorry, to get rid of the ads, I've got to pay at least $99 a month, and then they only give you X number of ad-free hours per month or something. I don't know how it works. I haven't really looked into it. Audio is audible. Or use Adblock, Adblock Plus. Okay. <laughs> 
I don't use that block. I've got no idea. Everyone seems to swear by it. <clears throat> so, is that free? Is that ad block plus free? Hey, German mechanical engineer. Hyperbolicus. Good username. <clears throat> I'm paranoid now. I definitely did start the recording on my uh, chat window. Yes. Yes, it's recording. All right. <clears throat> Actually, I'll just do a check. And here we go. Check. So that will allow me to... Um, that will allow me to sync up my chat window to my audio. Yeah, well, got to pay the bills. I can't complain about advertising. I make my income from advertising. <clears throat> hey, KF5OBS, no worries. Glad you enjoy the ruler. So, how many people have we got? We've got 51 viewers, awesome, and 98, 99 just went up. 100 lurkers. We've got 100 people lurking. Actually, I better send a Twitter update. I'm now live on Ustream. There we go. That should have just updated my Twitter feed. What's the record? Oh, I don't know. Oh, we had like 300 or something at one stage, I think. Um, sorry I'm not looking at the camera, guys. I've got to look at my screen. I've now got a dual screen set up. If you've been to the live shows before, you'll know that my setups absolutely sucked because I only had the laptop um, screen and I couldn't have both the, uh, both the window so I could check the video that wasn't lagging and all that, and have the chat window as well. But now I've got the dual screen thing. I've got the chat window happening up the top, and uh, all is good. I like it. So, <clears throat> I should probably tape my webcam onto the main camera, but <laughs> I didn't get around to it. All right. The whole idea of this show was that I can make all Monday mornings at this time, 7.30 a.m. Sydney time. It's now 7.48 a.m. I can make use of the time before the Amp Hour radio show. Because I've got to record my Amp Hour show at 10 a.m. this morning. Um, it's, usually, uh, nine, it's usually 9 a.m., but because of daylight saving time we just switched into, um, it is now 10 a.m. Sydney time. So I've got a couple of hours to kill, which is usually wasted. I usually like sleep in and just bum around and do nothing on a Monday morning before the radio show, so um, hopefully it might become regular. Uh, oh, we have a question already. Uh, so let's get a bigger chat window here. Huge chat window now. No, I'm not using IRC. I'm still using the uh, Ustream web interface. 106, so 57 viewers and 106 guests. Awesome. To turn up and watch me do what? I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> Just answer questions, really. <clears throat> so, uh, oh, Mike. Hey, Mike. If people don't know Mike, go to Mike's Electric Stuff. <clears throat> He's got a question. At Electronics, what percentage of visitors didn't understand what you were selling? <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> they thought I was selling MakerBot, so I was asking, how much is it? When can I get one? You know, like, <laughs> asking me all sorts of... They thought I was selling the MakerBot. They didn't understand. They walk past and I see them, and they look, and they go, Huh? What's going on? He's got, like, a big cardboard cutout of himself. There's a whiteboard. There's some Back to the Future posters. There's a bloody canyon in harness hanging from the, hanging from the uh, booth, and he's got a, like a anti-static mat with some a whole bunch of monitors and video playing. What the hell, you know? And <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, I had to explain. I was the only one at the show who was not selling something, or I was selling my, you know, I'm selling my show. So I, I had like an info sheet, and I'd, I'd try and explain it, and a lot of them still didn't get it. They just went, oh, oh. 
okay, wandered off, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh boy, greetings from Norway, hey Super Domus. Greetings from Latvian, from Latvian? Latvia, isn't it? There's no N on the end. Uh, greetings from a Latvian, I would assume. Or have I got your, oh, apologies if I've got your country wrong there. St Stasix. Uh, Germany, hey Germany. Lots of German viewers. Hopefully it's like 10pm in Germany or something. I, I did check. So um, it's not like 1am in the morning, like the last show was, I think. So... <clears throat> How many hours do I usually sleep? Oh, I slept five and a half last night. Five. Sagan was uh, having a few problems. Usually I try and get seven. Seven. If I don't get seven, I'm usually not happy. Sometimes I'll get eight. Because um, <clears throat> I usually, I'm still in my pyjamas at 10 a.m. sometimes. It's quite sad. That's what happens when you uh, work for yourself. Google Hangout. Yeah, I've done Google Hangouts, but the quality's terrible. <clears throat> Hopefully I can keep up with all these... Uh... <clears throat> you stream chat won't auto-scroll. That's for me. You've got to move the bar right to the bottom. <clears throat> Germany, man. Hey, from India. Hmms. From India. How you doing? Don't have too many Indian viewers, I don't think. Poland? Hungary? UK, another one from the UK, Mike's from the UK as well, Indiana, that's not a different country. Uh, Slovakia, Netherlands, three Poles, three Polish people, let me guess, you're all programmers. Sorry, Polish programming joke. Who's Madame Merkel? No idea. Yes, I've heard of um, Sound West. Um, oh God, what's his name? Please, yeah, he. I actually met him at the trade show. He actually came up to the stand. Um, <clears throat> yes, Rod. Rod Elliot, thank you. Mental block. Rod Elliot. Yeah, if you haven't, yeah, he does. It runs an excellent website. He uh, came up to the stand and we had a chat for, I don't know, a good half hour. Yeah, he's got a really good site if you're into audio stuff. Rod, Rod Elliott, sound, sound.westhost.com. Somebody put the link up there. Mad Hun. Yeah, he's got tons of good audio stuff. Some of it's been published in uh, Silicon Chip Magazine as well, um, I think. Or he was going to get it published in there as well. Yeah, he's got tons of cool audio projects. Really detailed. He's got stuff on CFL Lighting. Um, all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> Greetings from Finland! Wow, we have... <laughs> Is there anyone from a country who hasn't been called out yet? So, is everyone getting good video update rate? Because it looks great on my screen. And I'm, and I'm only using half my upload bandwidth. It should be really optimised. Um, Estonia. Hello from the Caribbean. Israel. Great stream. Yeah, ever, much better than the past. Yeah, very smooth. Excellent. Alright, looks like we've fixed the audio. to get Worth, worth its 199 bucks to buy Ustream Producer Pro. <clears throat> Excellent. Great in the UK. Terrific. <clears throat> we have... Man, that's a lot of... 69 viewers and 121 guests now. Wow. Hey, uh, Mike. Are you going to be doing live shows? <laughs> Why not? You're doing a lot of videos lately. You might as well get into live shows. What's Fraps? Zadster? What's Fraps? It's claiming 30 to 40 frames per second. Well, it can't be 40, because I'm only transmitting in 30 frames per second. So, really, you're getting, if you're getting 30 frames per second at the other end, that's just awesome. I mean, I could even 
experiment with increasing the resolution. Who who wants me to experiment on the fly to increase the resolution? <laughs> Behind stuff. Res is a bit low. Well, you know, it's 640 by 480. No, better not. <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> That's one person who wants me to dick around with it live. I'm pretty sure I won't screw it up. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not recording this at all. I'm recording with my main cam up here. Yeah, it's still recording. It's got my face tracking on. Actually, that's that's probably going to be pretty crap. The focus is probably going to be all in and out, but I've got to autofocus. <laughs> hey, from New Zealand. How you doing? Experiments are fun. Yeah, come on. Let's let's play. Here we go. I'm going to play with my... Well, I'm not sure if it actually updates the encoder on the fly. So I have no idea. So let, let's go to 800 by 600. Actually, I'll be able to see it because I'm 500 kbits per second. So I'm going to 800 by 600 resolution, 30 frames per second. I'm still going to keep 500 kbit. Oh, see, that's the thing. It'll compress it to whatever it needs to to keep that average bit rate. So, you know, I can increase the resolution. Keyframe every 60 frames. I can say, this is great. So, saving. Here we go. Okay, is it has the resolution increased? I just saved it to 800 by 600. Anyone? Then clue, you got your question mark around back to front. If you want to put, if you want to ask me a question, put Q colon, and then write your question because it'll show up as a big Q here, and I'll be able to see it easily. No difference. Uh, all right. Well, so much for that. I'll change it back. So it looks like you've got to stop the feed, and I won't stop the feed. I don't want to dick around with that. So let, let's go back to 640 by 480. <clears throat> so yeah. Yeah, I don't think it can update that on the fly, which I don't blame it for not being able to do that, really. That's uh, it's a bit of an ask. Can you blow up the crappy multimeter live? I had that little analog one. I did have a plan for that, um, but I haven't got a key component of that yet. Um, so I want to, I, I do want to destroy that cheap multimeter. Um, somebody asked what my main camera is. I've said many times it's a Canon HF G10. It's Canon's top of the range prosumer camera. Um, it's really, really good. It's actually too good on some things, as I showed in a recent video. It's depth of field. It's shallow depth of field. It can get so shallow depth of field. Its its autofocus system is crap. Um, <laughs> that it's because it's got such such a good lens and and you know everything else that um but it's got some really great features on it though for video blogging um but then some annoying stuff like re like actually if i replay a clip i just did then it loses the settings for the um loses the settings for the auto exposure and stuff and it's just yeah but anyway you, you, you learn to get around the idiosyncrasies of these things. But yeah, I, I wouldn't go back because it's low light performance is brilliant. But now I've got all this. See, I haven't uh, turned on the lights here. I'm still operating with my main lights off. My new 260 watt fluoros. Whoa, whoa my fluoros, LEDs. They're my 260 watt LEDs up there. So I turn those off. It's auto. The camera can compensate for that. So I don't know if that video quality is any better, but that's really bright. <clears throat> and uh, and then I've got the uh, bench, the lab, the, the bench uh, LEDs as well, which if you haven't seen, there they are, up there. There you go, off, and I've got my remote control. Off, on, off, on. And they're pretty handy, because um, they light up the bench when I need the light, but if I'm doing a teardown or something, and it's got, um, and the teardown's got like a, you know, a, an LCD on it or something, and the light's reflecting off that, I can just switch it off, and the camera gains up, and everything's fine, and so I've got the best of both worlds. 
and then the two big 60 watt ones if you haven't seen those they're up on the roof they're up on the roof well, you can turn them on but hang on yeah there they are ta-da and but you've probably seen those because you've no doubt seen my recent videos with Doug so installing those <clears throat> oh, questions 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 what's the worst multimeter I've ever seen oh well that analog one's pretty bad like those those two dollar cheapies they're just garbage you know those two dollar digitals yes I still have my second hand LaCroix don't know what I'm gonna do with that at all um, can I blow one up live? No. no. I don't have anyone anything to blow it. I could put it across the mains or something, but I don't want to do that. Got something else in mind for it. <clears throat> Would I recommend the Rigol DSA 815 for pre-compliance EMC? Ask Bike Trails Dave. Um, uh, I, you know, I'm not hugely into the EMC side of it, and I haven't used it because I don't have the proper compliance, like a proper... Um, uh, wide band with an uh, EMC antenna for it and I don't think mine's got the there's a op there's options for it as well there's like software options or something to do better EMC compliance testing but yes read the right Ry Rigol have specific data sheets on using it for EMC pre-compliance you can buy this module with it or something that helps with EMC pre-compliance I'm not un up on all the huge you know the technical details of doing EMC compliance like that so um, if you know about that, but yes, apparently it is quite suitable. Rigol are marketing that specifically at the uh, at the low end EMC pre-compliance market. Obviously, it's not good for compliance testing, but for pre-compliance, as you're asking, yes. Um, there's probably nothing else in the price range for EMC pre-compliance. So, ah, oh, sorry. Feng Klu, what time do I usually get to the lab? I don't know, some some days I don't even turn up. I, I rarely get here before 9am. I'm, I'm never here before 9am. So, it, you know, 10am maybe I'll rock up. If I'm doing a full day here or something, I'll rock up at 10am and leave at 6 or something like that. So, um, I have to get home by 6. If you, you know, you probably hear me on my videos a lot. Oh, I had to leave. You know, I had to go. Um, it's... Usually because I have to get home because um, for uh, Sagan, Sagan has his bath at 6 p.m. and and uh, and the wife wants me there and you know I've got to <laughs> and he's got to be there and he goes to bed by seven. Um, it's earlier now because it's daylight saving I think so you know I've got to be home for that. She wants me home so I get ordered home. That's why I have to finish videos quickly and you know if I start sometimes I start shooting at four or five o'clock and I've got to you know I've got to be out the door by six and. Uh, because I, I don't like waiting for the next day. Oh, look, I'll finish filming the next day. I, you know, because I'll, I'll never get it done. Um, so that's, a lot of people ask that. Why do I, you know, why do I have to rush things? Well, you know, um, because I'm married and I have a kid. That's why I have to rush things. <laughs> if you're married and you have a kid, you'll understand. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> Methylol asks, what is impedance? I don't understand it. Impedance is AC resistance, basically. Um, uh, there, there are formulas for impedance for inductance and resistance, uh, inductance and capacitance, sorry. And, um, and it effectively, at a fixed frequency, you know, one kilohertz or one megahertz or whatever, a capacitor or an inductor has an impedance which is the equivalent resistance at that frequency. So you can actually put two capacitors in series, for example, and have a capacitor voltage divider. And because they will act like a resistor voltage divider at a specific frequency. Um, there's, it's not hard at all. Impedance is really quite easy. You've just got to know the fact that Capacitors and inductances have a resistance at a specific frequency. So, it's pretty easy. 
Did you ever play around with one of the Rigol 1000 series arbitrary waveform gens? No, I've never used the 1000 series arb gen. I've only used the new 2000. Have I seen the Mino DT? <laughs> Obviously not, because I have no idea what a Mino DT830B is. The internals made me weep when I saw them. Why is it shit? <coughs> with the company name Mino? <laughs> I don't... I, don't doubt it. <laughs> what is the guy next door yapping on about? <laughs> yeah, my I, I'm pretty sure my neighbours on either side can hear me. I, I'm I'm pretty sure because I can hear them when they're talking. Um, usually loud, and I'm usually quite a loud talker. Go figure. Um, so yeah, they could probably hear me. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> oh boy. How did I get to know Doug? We're former work colleagues. We worked at uh, Tally's together. Tally's and Surcell here in Sydney. And that's how I first met Doug. He came into uh, our hardware group. We hired him as an um, analogue specialist when we're starting a new project. We had a new project and we needed an analogue guru. And uh, he became our analogue guru and... Uh, Underwater, you know, the analog and acoustics guru, because we were doing underwater stuff. Um, so that's why uh, that's why we got Doug on the team, and he is the best. Trust me. Any update on the premium content idea? No, I still haven't given it a thought. I well, much thought. I've got, which I haven't edited yet. I've got the layout. I captured laying out the USB power supply board you know I did like you know five frames per second or something and I captured me laying out the whole thing and I want to edit that I want to do two I was thinking maybe two different types of edits one is my normal you know half hour just off the cuff kind of you know thing as the time lapses go in and uh, and that'll just be a regular blog video and then I was thinking maybe I could use that as some premium content do like a two hour version like extended stuff where I actually, you know, think about what I'm going to say and, and you know, go through step by step of how I laid out that what I was thinking when I laid out that board and what I was taking into consideration and stuff like that. So, um, and, you know, I might sell it for like two bucks or something. So, I don't know, that, that was um, just an idea. But the hardest part is knowing which is to find in somewhere where I can where I can sell it, like some, you know, website, mechanism, some system, you know. I thought YouTube had like a pay per video thing, but it doesn't. Um, Ustream, I just found out Ustream have a premium, like you can do a, um, like a PayPal pay-per-view thing. So, you know, um, oops, something's going on here. <clears throat> Something's going on with Windows. Don't like that. Windows just activated itself. That's not good. <laughs> that reminds me, I just make sure my chat window is still recording. Yeah, chat window is still recording. We're still good. How's the video and audio? Video and audio is still sweet. It's just, I think now that I've got control over the encoding algorithm for the video, I think that was the whole problem that we had before. So... <clears throat> oh, how much are those LED panels? Um, less than 200 bucks each, Australian. Under 200. Yes, I will be, Kaysera, I will be doing a review of the Rigol DS2000 series. I've got a lot of stuff to review. I've got the Mantis Scope. I've got the Mantis Scope to review. I've got the DS2000 uh, uh, oscilloscope. I've got the DG2000 or whatever it's called, Function Gen. I've got the DSA815 um, Spectrum Analyzer. They're all backlogged, and yes, I'm, I'll probably have like 
I'll probably get like three days where I just spend three days recording a review each day and just get them over, over and done with. Um, no, I didn't get the LaCroix running. Sorry. Isn't it creepy that hundreds of people can see and hear you, but you can't see them? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of, but I... Sort of used to it. You just get used to it. Oh, we've got 80 viewers now. 80 viewers and 132 guests. So let's call that well over 200. Wow. Awesome. Thanks for turning up. Uh, when will we have the pleasure to buy a finished micro supply? <laughs> as soon as I get it finished. The USB one will come first, I'm hoping. I, I, I literally only spent a couple of hours on it in the last month. I have not spent much time at all. So, But I hope to change that. I keep saying that, but something else always comes up and... Ah, oh, it's annoying. Yeah, I haven't done anything on the actual micro supply. I'm doing the USB one first, because the USB one is kind of like a combination of both. Now it's kind of like a small version of both, because if you haven't noticed, the USB one is also powered from a battery, powered from a mobile phone battery. So it's going to be a battery powered power supply as well and it will have serial comms with the PC and you know um, yeah it's not as good it's not high power it's only low power but it's really small and cute and I really like it so um, yeah I, I just want to get that one done and dusted the bigger one considering that I now kind of combine the two in the USB power supply the, ba the battery power concept um, I want to now revisit the micro supply and maybe make it bigger and higher power because there's probably too much overlap there's probably not a huge difference between the micro supply as i intended it and the new usb one so maybe i was thinking oh, i might even go up in power you know have like a couple of amps instead of an amp or something um so yeah and bigger battery packs and all that sort of stuff so that that uh was kind of the kind of the idea can I show you around the building sometime oh I don't know it's not that boring it's not that exciting <laughs> you see my door it's just a bunch of glass offices with doors and that's about it it's not that exciting I'm afraid Yes, there, there we go. Leach put up the formulas for uh, impedance. What other businesses? Oh, they're all um, they're all uh, professional businesses. They're either like a law lawyers or real estate agents or um, you know accountants. Um, you know. <laughs> um, you know uh, Companies like that. There's a few little, little one-man band jobs. There's a little transport company or something. There's, you know, there's various. There's, you know, there's no like factories or any, you know, there's no. They're all service industries, um, essentially. Really, they're not. Uh, they're not actually producing anything. Or, I'm, I'm, I'd be the odd one out in this building. It's a pretty new, modern building. Um, it's yeah, in one of these corporate parks and. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it's not like I'm, I'm not next to a, uh, <laughs> I'm not next to like a, uh, smash repairs place or anything like that. That's, that's not this clientele around here. It's quite, uh, very, very professional business kind of stuff. I don't even know what half of them do. They've got their name on the, you know, on the thing and there's like, there's a couple of engineering companies actually, they're like there's an IT company, there's a couple of engineering companies, I don't know what they do, I go to their website and there's still no clue <laughs> from what they actually do, you know, engineering services or something, don't know. <clears throat> do you know any way to fix a Craftsman multimeter? No, I don't, sorry. Says I have no idea what wrong what's wrong with it, and you can't fix things via email. It's too hard. 
<clears throat> what sort of protocol do those RF LED remotes use? Oh, I don't know. They're probably just a silly, um, you know. Uh, well, this one's for the RF. This is this one is for the uh, RF powerpoints. I've now got them with the powerpoints, so um, <clears throat> I just control. Oh, so I don't use the remote that came with the LED panels. It's another one that's got an antenna. It's probably just an analog thing. It's probably not very exciting. <clears throat> Did I pay something for the LED panels, or was it only expense an expensive ad for Doug? No, I bought the well. I bought the uh, two 60 watt LED panels. I paid for those, and um, because he had to import those, whereas the other ones he actually manufactures himself, and he had spare, so he gave me the. Uh, lead strips and the fluoro some I mean, he just had he's got tons of those old lead fluoro tubes so he just gave me a couple of those but no I paid for the lead panels because um, they were brand new imports from China that he's uh, investigating selling so um, no I yeah I, I paid for them I paid good good money for those lead panels yes I'm sure there will be more videos with Doug Doug's very excited by the feedback by the way guys if you want to uh, see more Doug videos, um, send him an email or something and say, Hey, I love your videos. Please do more videos with Dave because he was quite excited by the feedback he got and everything. So he does want to do some more. So he's planning some stuff. So yeah, um, Doug certainly might become a semi-regular guest on the blog. He's already done, you know, four or five videos now. So, um, yeah, if you want more Doug, uh, send him an email. He'll be chuffed. <laughs> Windows 7 or Vista? Ugh, oh, get real. Vista's a heap of shit. No, I, I use Windows 7 on all my machines. Oh, well, except a really old notebook where I still run Windows XP. What is my education? What university did I study at? I went to two, University of Western Sydney and University of Technology. Uh, that's a long story. I've also been to uh, uh, TAFE as well, with the diploma level TAFE stuff way back. It's a complicated story. <clears throat> Are you allowed to keep the Rigol gear you just mentioned, or do you have to return the units? Um, no, they're um, they're keepers. I I believe they're demo units. They're keeper demo. Well, they're, well, demo like you know, sort of ex demo units. That's why it took us so long for Rigol to get them to me because they didn't want to send me new ones or something. So they they had to find sort of you know spare demo ones they had lying around. And uh, no, but I do believe I get to keep them, which is cool. Although I don't need another scope, um, but uh, the, certainly the function gen and the uh, spectrum analyzer will come in handy for various videos. And it's good to have stuff like that because I'm in the review business. People say, why do I keep all this stuff? Why don't I sell it or do, do whatever, give it away or whatever? Because I need units to compare against. If I'm doing a review, people like to see comparisons and all that sort of stuff, and I can't do that if I don't have the gear. So, you know, it's, <laughs> um, so that's why I, uh, I like, do like getting to keep the gear. It's not because I use it. I don't. It sits there gathering dust because I've got other gear that I use to, you know, uh, do stuff. The gain on that, uh, on this camera keeps changing. Is that because of my black shirt? Is it trying to, uh. It keeps gaining up and down there. Oh, anyway. Uh, Fenclu's uh, doing a similar PSU. What op op amps do you recommend? Oh, it, de it depends. Um, uh, microchip ones are quite good and low cost. With low offset voltage, you can get like a, a, um, a chopper amp from uh, microchip. They're, they're doing pretty decent op amps these days. Um, is my flatter revenue quite decent from which company? No, it's not much. 
I haven't made much on Flatter at all. I haven't even got it into my bank account. I don't know how to get it into my bank account. I've got, I've got some money in there, so thanks who've donated it. It's all building up in there, and I assume at one point I'll be able to transfer it over to uh, my thing. But no, Flatter, I put it up, and not many people are using it, really. No, so it's not, it's not decent. It's just a drop in the bucket. But every cent, every dollar helps, of course. It, it will eventually come across, I'm sure. I just haven't, I haven't gone in there and seen how to link to my account and stuff and how they pay. I don't, no, no idea. So, but it is building up in there. Um, Burke asks, when I reviewed the Agilent U1272A, you said it was, I said it was excellent, but I still preferred the Fluke 87. Has my opinion changed? Um, ah. Oh. Look, I I still use the 87. You'll notice in the videos, the, the 87 is still my go-to meter here in the lab because I've been using a, a Fluke for 20 years and I trust it and it's the one I grab and I just like the use of it. It's just simple and works, except for the stupid AC current. I mean, there's there's a lot wrong with the Fluke. I mean, if I was buying, if I, you know, if I was buying with my own money, now if I, you know, had to start from scratch and I was buying with my own money, I'd probably buy a couple of Agilents instead of the Flukes, because they're cheaper and they're much more feature rich, much more bang, bang per buck. Because um, the Fluke has lots of annoying stuff. You've got to undo the case to get to the fuses and those screws are self-tapping, not uh, metal threaded inserts. You've got to um, it's, uh, the battery snap, the 9 volt battery snap is shit on it. Um, the default AC current is useless. Um, you know, it's a pain in the ass. So the, the Fluke has a, you know, it's really showing its age, I think, in that respect. It was the duck's guts 15 years ago uh, when it first came out, but it's not the duck's guts anymore. But it's stable and it works and I trust it. That's why it's, and I've got two of them just sheer, sheer odds that I'm going to be within reaching distance of a Fluke instead of the Agilent. Um, the Agilent's down the other end of the bench. But, you know, I do use both. So, there you go. Um, <clears throat> what price point am I aiming for the USB power supply? Around $60 like I originally thought? No, it's going to be higher than that, unfortunately. Um, Nagel Industries? Um, no, it's going to be higher. Um, just it, it it adds up. I mean, I you know if I sold it at sixty bucks at the moment, based on the bomb cost, it wouldn't be worth my while to sell it. Um, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Um, and then if I want to have dealers, you know, like um, sell it as well in different countries, which I'm enjoying with the microcurrent. I'm not nearly making as much on the microcurrent now um, as I was when I was selling it directly, but they. But I love having the dealers that um, that can on-sell it, because then I don't have to deal with the overseas shipping. Uh, but I'm probably going to foolishly do like a Kickstarter-type um, thing for that, just because I'm nuts and I want to try it. <laughs> and I'll probably regret it. In fact, I guarantee I'll regret it. But anyway, they, who knows? It might not get its funding. It might not sell. People may not want it. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> Um, but no, unfortunately, it's going to be a bit higher. Like, it definitely won't be over a hundred bucks, but it's it's not going to be sixty. It'll probably be somewhere in between, perhaps. Um, no, I don't have a pet. I'm not allowed to. The wife doesn't. The wife says I can't even take care of myself, let alone a pet. So, not allowed to have. I used to have dogs. I'm a dog person. I am not a cat person. I hate cats. The the best cat is one which is squished under the tires of my car. That is the best cat possible. <clears throat> Sorry to all you cat lovers out there, but they're hideously evil creatures, cats. <clears throat> Oof. Oh man, I'm. There's lots of questions to catch up on. <clears throat> what is the best way to measure AC voltage and AC current with a microcontroller? I have some uh, CTs, but I want something more precise. I want to measure a wind generator. Oh. Man, I would probably use a, um, the, the best way to probably do it is to use a true RMS converter chip 
so it converts it into a DC voltage which then you can measure with um, easily with easily with your microcontroller otherwise you've got to deal with you know fast sampling and, and doing all sorts of things that's you know no, I, the easiest way, a true RMS converter like an analog device's AD636, is it? Somebody help me out. What's the industry standard analog to digital converter chip? Anyone? AD636, am I spot on there? <clears throat> Come on, I'm crowd. Yeah, also Mike says, yeah, there's AC measuring chips aimed at the electricity market yeah there's tons of those now that um, can calculate power and they measure the phase and everything else they do the whole works for you the time in Australia is 8 sorry yes 8 eight twenty six, so almost 8 30 a.m. no it's not 80 84 36 6 6 yes I think it's the 80 6 3 6 is the yeah, low power true RMS converter. Thanks, Dark Insane. Yeah, that's the one. You'll find that in all multimeters. Like any any multimeter that has an RMS converter chip, you'll probably find an AD636 in there. Um, it's been the industry standard for like 20 years or something. Um, so hang on, I've got to scroll back up. Oh, hang on. I made the mistake of scrolling down. And I can't scroll all the way back up. Ah, oh, so I've lost some questions. Ah, oh, fail. Ah, oh, sorry. Is there some way I can some option to? There's some option to pause. I can pause the chat. I can turn on slow mode. I have no idea what slow mode is for the chat window. No, I've lost it. Looks like it only keeps the last, I don't know, 50 posts or something. Oh, hang on, my feet are getting cold. I'm going to turn the aircon off. Feet are getting cold. Because in the lab, bare feet. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't wear shoes in the lab. I like going around bare feet, and there, because I'm sitting in the corner here, we just get the draft from the aircon, and it's, just seems a bit chilly. So yeah, sorry about people who've lost their questions. What is my most embarrassing fail ever? Oh gee, I don't, I don't know. That's hard. Um, I remember once at my first job. Um, we were working up all night. It was like midnight or something. And um, uh, and we had to get this product out the next day. And the software guys were... It was like a Z80-based um, security system. And the, and the software guys were busy coding. And I was busy doing the hardware and testing stuff. And, um, and they gave me the latest ROM dump. Because we are trying to fix hardware and software problems at the same time. They gave me the latest... Um, software and I programmed an EEPROM back when you had to, you know, the window, you had to erase it and put in the eraser and you and you uh, did that and um, and I it was like and it was like our last EEPROM or something. We we didn't have another one and uh, and I plugged it in backwards after I programmed it and I blew the crap out of it and that was. That was thoroughly embarrassing. It's not a big fail. It's just one of those things that, you know, that um, that was embarrassing at the time. Jeez, I was only like 17, you know. I was, I <laughs> but it was midnight, and I just, I plugged it in backwards. And, yeah, the magic smoke escaped. That was our last EEPROM, so that ruined all that. <clears throat> oh, shit, I just lost someone's question. Can you show some sort of basic time code? At a precise moment when we can estimate the lag. Oh, okay. Um, I I would need a clock. I would need a clock on the wall. I can do. No, there's the split cam software. Ustream doesn't have the ability to put like a time code on the display, which is really annoying. But I can use this split cam software, which allows me to put a clock on 
there, but I don't think it does seconds. I only think it does minutes. So unless you've got seconds and then you're synchronized all your time, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I could have a clock here. Because there's not much on the wall there behind me, really. There we go. I'll show some more stuff. <clears throat> Ooh, do I need to pay tax on equipment you've got? Um, in what way? No. No, not really. No, I don't pay tax on equipment I get. Um, what project in my... Oh, sorry. Uh, did, you get, did you get a Raspberry Pi? Any experiments you tried on? Yes, I do have a Raspberry Pi. No, I haven't even powered it up yet. What do I think about it? No idea. Um, yeah, I still drive the crappy Holden Vectra that's fallen apart. Made in Germany. Or the Opel Vectra, as they call it. 2002 model. Just seems to be a lag in chat to video. Oh, okay. Right. Alright. Um, well, look. I'll do, a, I'll do a lag check. Here we go. I'll type in check. Ready? And I'll go check. So that should have came through as me saying check <clears throat> on the chat window. Why don't I disable auto exposure on my video camera? All right. I will disable. Well, it's got right light. It's called right light. There we go. Does that... Does that fix things? Okay, I've changed, I've disabled right light, which is the Logitech um, version of, I guess, auto exposure. So I've still got auto focus on, and I can follow my face. Watch this. There we go. And if I move, it's going to follow me. How's that? <laughs> is that better? Should I leave that on? Anyone? Yeah, it's kind of creepy. Yeah, it's really... No? No? Yeah, that's built into the webcam software. That's that's the webcam <laughs> Logitech stuff. All right, disable. It's gone. There we go. All right, so I've turned off the right light, which is probably the auto exposure. How's the weather over here? It's a bit overcast today. Any update on working with the Mythbusters? <laughs> you do know that was a joke, right? <laughs> that was an April Fool's joke? <laughs> We're not working with the Mythbusters. Or is your question a joke? And I'm being had. <laughs> uh, oh, is the... Uh, John. Hey, John. Um, is the ESR meter I use still available? Yes, go to Bob Parker's link. Go to, I linked in on my blog and on the YouTube page, I linked in Bob Parker's site, and there are two companies still selling that ESR meter. It does not look the same, but it's the same LCR meter, as in circuitry and firmware. It's actually Bob Parker's firmware. It's Yeah, so it is still available. It's very popular. Sold many, many tens of thousands of them. Extremely popular. Uh. Feng Clue. I drive a Holden Vectra, and no, I'm not a car mechanic. No. I'm just driving the thing into the ground now. All I'm doing is changing oil and... Well, I pay someone to change the oil and the filter every every once in a while, and that's about it. If it gives me any more trouble... I've had so much trouble with it. It gives me any more trouble. I'm just going to give it a flick. I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm glad it would not have survived. If I was still working at Altium and I had to drive halfway across Sydney every day, it, uh, it wouldn't survive. Hang on. Just checking my not oh, five five six seconds lag, huh? Okay, well there you go. Five six seconds lag on the chat window. I don't think that's my end. That's that's like the UStream server. That'd be the UStream server doing that. Have I worked with any Bluetooth chips? Yeah, I have at the system level. Don't ask me the name. They were. National Semiconductor ones. Um, I don't remember the number offhand. It's one of those long numbers. Yep, 
my feet are ESD compliant. I spray them with ESD spray when I come in. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, microwave pizza. Um, if, if you got bored and prototyped that printer thing we talked about, would it spoil your fun doing it yourself? Um, oh, it may, but I don't know if I've got time to do it myself. The plan is, guys, if you haven't... I'm not sure if I've talked about it, but the plan is, for these live chat shows, I've got an old Citizen Dot Matrix printer, and... Um, the idea was that this would be the EV blog teletype. So <laughs> what I'd do is I'd have an Arduino. I'm thinking about sticking the Arduino in the little serial expansion slot down in there. And the Arduino would connect to the IRC chat server and it would pull out any text with the Q colon on it and it would print it on the had to print it on the teletype. So it wouldn't print out the whole chat window. So I'd sit here and I'd go dee, dee. Nee, nee. And I'd, I'd get all these, um, I'd get all the questions, um, just just for fun, you know, get all the questions on a dot matrix printer and you know the big roll of paper, so I can, so I wouldn't mess, I wouldn't miss any questions. They'd all just come out on a sheet, and I could rattle them all off, and um, yeah. So I do want to try that. I've just got to find a spare couple of hours to try and hack that together, because um, I found somebody who's already done some code for. Um, for the Arduino, which connects to an IRC server. I've just got to see if it works and then extract it out, talk to the printer and do that sort of stuff. So that's the plan. Anyway, I think that'd be fun. So, uh, I don't know, you might spoil my fun a little bit, microwave pizza, but I wouldn't be disappointed. <laughs> oh. Whoa, lab gear. I missed your question. Your lab gear, you've got a what's the next? Ah, oh, sorry, I missed your question. Any updates working with the Mythbusters? No. How's the weather? No. How much? How's the weather over there? I've answered that one. It's fine. Oh, no, it's uh, overcast here. It's overcast and maybe. I don't know. 15 degrees at the moment. It's pretty cold this morning. It was been very warm lately. How much did it cost to view the taping of the Big Bang Theory? How long did it take? Is the audience laughter amplified, modified for TV? It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything to get into the taping of the Big Bang Theory. Um, there's an announcement list or something, and um, you have to jump online, there's like a ticket server or something. So you have to jump online at a specific time. There's a website which lists the exact hour, you know, the exact minute that you have to jump online and try and get your tickets. And it's first in, first serve. Um, something like that. So um, the uh, wife and I, the wife's a big fan of Big Bang 2, and uh, uh, just before our US trip, we jumped online, it was like 2am in the morning, so we got up at 2am and we both had notebooks, so we're both sitting in bed there with our, <laughs> with our notebooks and we both tried to get onto the server at the exact minute, it was like 2am Sydney time and it wouldn't work, the server was all shut down and ah oh, man it was overloaded and ah, oh, I, I think this happens like every day, the server just at the time, the server just gets overloaded and uh, but somehow, um, freakishly, we managed to get on and we scored two tickets to the Big Bang Theory. Um, what was the other part of your question? How long does it take? Um, it took, well, you, you have to turn up. The thing is, even though you get tickets, right, you are not guaranteed a place, right, which is crazy. So we, we only found this out because we decided, oh, we better check on like a forum first, like a, you know, a, a fan forum or whatever, to see if anyone's been there and see what time we recommend turning up beforehand. Like, because it said turn up at like 2 p.m. or something, you know, or 3 p.m. or something like that, um, uh, was the official time. And we thought, oh, you know, I wonder how much, how early. And people on the uh, fan forum said, no, if you don't turn up at least three, four hours early and get in line, even though you've got a ticket, you won't make it. 
and sure enough we turned up like four hours early and we secured a place in the line and still we were like 30th in the line or something four hours early from the official time it says on the ticket to be there it's crazy so um uh, yeah, but we find, and we were scared that we weren't going to get in because they let all, like these people, you know, friends and family of the show or whatever, they let all those in first. You know, friends or family of the cast members or whatever, or, you know, if you know somebody, you know, so they, they're on a separate queue to you and they let all them in first. And then however many seats are left over on the day, the people with the tickets get in. And we were like, we only made it with like 10 to spare or something. Um, ten, 10 people behind us got in or something and the rest just, sorry, you know, you've been waiting there four or five hours, sorry, there's no seats left. But, but I've got a ticket, I've got a ticket. No. Nah. So, eh, anyway, and you asked about the laughter. Um, no, it, the laughter is real. The laughter, they had like four mics, I think, um, boom mics coming down for the audience and, um, and it is all live. They pretty much do it in one take. Um, and the laughter is real. People think all that laughter is canned. It's, it's not. It probably sounds that way from the way that they sharply edit it in the end. But no, as I can assure you that laughter is real and it was recorded on the day. Because their dialogue is funny. And, and we laughed, you know. It's, and uh, yeah, yeah, so it's real. It's real. I think it's just the very sharp editing and stuff like that. Um, and there's no laugh sign, there's no sign, you know, flash laugh now, you know, there's, there's nothing like that. So the audience were genuinely laughing at those jokes. So, <clears throat> so yes, it, yes, it is probably amplified, modified in some way. Um, Chad? Yes. And I got to meet Raj after the show. The others buggered off, like Sheldon buggered off pretty early. Um, but no, I, I actually got to meet Raj. Seemed a bit depressed. Don't know why. Maybe he was having a bad day. But, uh, nice enough guy. Mm. Oh. Super Domus, what project in my career did I find most fun or best? Oh, I don't know. They're all fun. I mean, the, uh... Best, fun, they're, they're different. I mean, yeah. Fun, I, I don't know. Um, ones, the, the fun ones are ones where you get to do drop tests and stuff like that. They're, they're really fun when you build something mechanical. Like I've done lots of, you know, underwater um, test gear and you either get to, you know, you test them in pressure tanks and they'll explode or you'll get to do drop tests because they have to survive certain falls and things like that and doing doing and characterizing those sort of things are fun so uh, often those projects won't even make it through they're just part of something else or something but when you actually get I love fun stuff is when you sort of get to combine the electrical and the mechanical and the whole engineering sphere in there they're actually quite fun um, even though I'm not a mechanical engineer by any stretch, I do actually enjoy, I can actually appreciate mechanical aspects behind projects. Woo! What PSI asks, what max volts am I aiming at for my micro supply? Well, the USB one, the USB one is um, uh, about plus 18 volts, I think. Um, plus 18 volts at uh, um, the max current. I don't, well, the max current is going to be dependent upon how much heat it can dissipate in the final PCB heatsink and stuff. But it'll be capable, it'll be in theory capable of over an amp. Um, but I don't know whether or not, so I could probably do that short term. I don't know whether or not they can do that long term though. Because I'm dropping 2 volts on my voltage regulator and an amp times 2 volts is 2 watts, so I've got to dissipate 2 watts in my PCB heatsink and at the moment I'm using a little pissy SOT 223 package, I'm probably going to change that to a D squared pack package uh, which will give me lower thermal resistance but then it's a square area of the copper oh, yeah, but it'll probably easily do 750 milliamps or something 
it'll easily be well over 500. It should be able to handle well over 500. Um, so, yeah, but it depends on the... But, yeah, that, that voltage drop, across, two volts across your regulator is a bit of a killer. Even though I'm using the tracking pre-regulated DC to DC converter, the... Um, yeah, it's... It, it uh, two volts is two volts at one amp, two watts, which is nothing if you've got a heat sink on it, a decent heat sink. I might try and put like a surface mount heat, finned heat sink on as well, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, in theory, like the DC to DC converter and the diodes and everything else, they're all capable of well over an amp. So it should be able to do it. it should be able to do the full amp that the LM3080 is capable of. That's the plan. Jeff asks, even though he didn't put a Q next to it, Jeff, um, yeah, if you want to ask a question, um, put a Q and a colon in front of it, and then it puts that little fancy um, Q symbol next to it. Uh, Altium still in Belrose. No, Alt Altium have moved. They've completely abandoned the building, their huge corporate, brand new corporate headquarters abandoned. In Belrose, they switched out the lights, they buggered off. Now there's only uh, less than a handful of people um, working at uh, Chatswood, I think. They've, they've moved to Chatswood. And um, you can find out. It's in the official uh, Australian Stock Exchange. They've put a, an official release in there with their new address and everything. They've cha officially changed their corporate address. That's, that's not secret. If, go read the Australian Stock Exchange press releases and you'll find their new address which is like level I don't know, level 6 on some building in Chatswood no idea <clears throat> so yeah they're, they're just a shell company now as far as they're still listed on this Australian stock market and, um, and their share price has just gone through the roof because they stripped the company to the bone. They absolutely stripped it. So, um, classic, absolute classic case of um, stripping all the fat out of the company, completely gutting it before you either sell it or maybe take it back private. They're going to do one of the two. So expect one of the two to happen in the not too distant future. Either they'll get bought out or they will uh, delist from the stock exchange and buy all the shares back. Um, so, yeah, I, <laughs> Markland or Fleishman, <laughs> asks LGR FBS, um, oh, I was, I was always a Hornby man, I, I had Hornby when I was a kid, I assume that's what you're referring to, I haven't been into model trains for a long time, 25, 30 years, I haven't been into model trains, but I, I always had Hornby. I was a Hornby man. I would. I really wanted to do my own train set again now, but at home I didn't have the room, and I don't have the time. Now I could set one up in the lab here, but... I don't have the time to take on another hobby. Third try. Yes, yeah, sorry, Super Domus. I missed your question. Lab gear. You've got a dual power supply, a low-end DSO, and a high-end multimeter. What do you recommend as... Your next bit of lab gear. Um, gee, uh, blah, 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 um, I, um, d well, you've only got. I assume you've got a, you've got a high-end multimeter. Well, you need a second multimeter. If you've only got one multimeter, get a second multimeter. Um, but uh, your next bit of gear, you're missing a function gen for for uh, starters. Um, every lab needs a function gen. Sometimes you know you don't use it that often. Um, but when you do, you need a function gen. So I would recommend a function generator, a DDS function generator. Get one of the, don't get one of those analog, um, you know, analog one, zero to two megahertz. Eh, they're, they're past their prime now. Uh, now for a couple of hundred bucks, you can at least get a, an entry level DDS one, zero to 20 megahertz, you know. Um, does all the basic stuff. So... That would be my recommendation for your next bit of gear. 
or if you don't have a uh, soldering microscope, I'd recommend some sort of soldering microscope set up to do SMD properly. Um, uh, Herman asks, what would you improve on local power distributions? Just scrolled. Local power distribution systems, if I could. DC instead of AC, higher voltage. Wow, local power distribution systems. Oh, I have no idea. I've never thought about it. Um, oh, as in inside the lab, kind of like inside your office kind of thing. Um, uh, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Having a standard low voltage DC outlet in a room would be, you know, nice, I think. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I, I'm not too fussed over that. I don't really have much of an opinion on that. Nagel, would upgrading to the Mark II debugger to the i3 be worth it for the features? Is native support for AS worth it to avoid the hassle? No idea. I don't have the Mark II debugger or the ice. I'm using the AVR Dragon. Um, which doesn't debug. It won't debug my... Doesn't have debug support over ISP, it's saying. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm just using the AVR Dragon. I couldn't get my AVR ISP Mark II. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, you're talking about the Mark II programmer. It's not the Mark II debugger. The, I, I assume you're talking about the ISP AVR Mark II programmer. It doesn't do debugging to the ICE 3. I don't know anything about the ICE 3. Sorry. Um, but debugging capability is um, important. And my Dragon won't do it over the ISP bus. I thought it could. You helped build and fly a UFO. <laughs> Mike, awesome. Have you done a video on that? Uh. Fenklu is probably my only fan in Pabby... Pabbyance? Pabbyance? If I'm pronounce, pronouncing correctly. <laughs> Let's cut the Polish chit chat. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, guys, hang on. Before I answer... Which sci-fi movie spaceship is the is the best looking? I guess your question is. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> best looking? Oh, it's, it's best looking. Oh, I don't know. It's either the uh, it's either the Enterprise or an X-wing. Possibly. I'm not into huge into sci-fi, but um, if you're talking about best looking, anyway. Let me know what you think of this. I may lose a few questions here, so sorry. Um, okay. Um, I've got, I've got um, an idea because somebody mentioned hacker spaces. I've got an idea. My face tracker's working. I noticed my face tracker. Look, hang on. I'll turn on. I'll turn on the face tracker for Logitech. Nah, it do, it doesn't follow my face, but the uh, my camera's following my face. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yes, my cardboard cutout, Dave. So there you go. How does it look? <laughs> anyway, the the idea is somebody mentioned hacker spaces. I had an idea for this cardboard cutout, Dave. I was thinking, so let me know if this is a twins, a dartboard. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Im Imperial Star Destroyer. Yeah, oh, they're, they're, but they're not pretty looking. The Imperial Star, De Star Destroyer is not pretty looking. And he said spaceship, right? Which kind of rules out the, the DeLorean. So, um, anyway. Um, uh, my idea is um, to send Cardboard Cutout Dave on a world tour of every hacker space. Well, not, probably not every, because there's thousands of hacker spaces, right? But send him on a world tour so that it hops from one hacker space to the next and people can maybe sign the back of it or something and then they can log the coordinates. So I'd have like a tracking tag on it, like a, um, a, uh, a Cation, um tag, you know, one of those uh, uh, geotags, what are they called? Dog tag things? Anyway, one of those trackable tags. Man, I've been out of the game too long, I forget. Um, but yeah, so we can update it on the map and see see how cardboard cutout Dave travels around the world, and uh, and they can sign it, maybe take a photo, and we can post it on a website or something, and um, and maybe they can do like a video tour of their lab with virtual with cardboard cutout Dave. Who thinks that's a good idea? Give me a thumbs up if you think that that idea has legs or it just sucks ass. Geotag. Yes. I like it. Me. Thumbs up. I want to do it. Me. Like it. Yes. Plus one. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Everyone's giving the thumbs up. <laughs> Travel bug. That's the bloody name of it. Travel bug. Thank you. Snowflyer. <clears throat> In Hack Lab TO. I assume TO is Toronto or something. Maybe. That's the first thing I think of when I think of TO. <clears throat> or it's a US state, is it? <clears throat> I'll take him to the pub. A <laughs> great idea. Oh yeah, yeah. It did yeah, so the logistics of it would be that the person who gets it would then be responsible at that hacker lab would then be responsible for possibly contacting another hacker lab and making sure that they're okay to you know, to get it and then you know, so that sh you know, shipping wouldn't cost too much. So it just goes in small little hops, you know. Um, so it doesn't cost anyone a fortune to ship on on ship the thing to the next hacker space. But um, yeah, I, I I think that'd be cool. So maybe like I could set up a, a website just for it or something, so you could keep track of you know follow Dave around the world as he visits the hacker spaces, and I can post photos and um, and video and stuff. And have like a map and so you can watch it and follow it. I, I think that'd be cool. That's the concept. Anyway, I, I want to do that. Yep. Send it to the Mythbusters. Alright, I'll send... Maybe I can send it to Jerry and Jerry knows uh, Grant in Mahara for the Mythbusters. And maybe we can, <laughs> it can end up at Mythbusters headquarters or something. Yeah. Um, yep. Toronto. I was, I was right. <clears throat> Have I ever considered to educate at a hacker space to the younger generation? Not really. Um, don't have time. You know, I. My God, I you know, I wish I had time to do stuff like that. If I was invited, yes, I probably would. Um, no one's ever really invited me, so I'm not. You know going to go out of my way to prepare courses and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, I've, I've never really been asked to do it, so... Um, <clears throat> but no, I'm, I'm not just going to go spend my weekends hanging out at hacker spaces and stuff. I just don't have the time. I've, I have to have a life. Um, but if I was asked to do... If I was asked to turn up or something and, you know, I don't know, do something, I probably would. Everyone says send it to the Mythbusters. <laughs> no, I don't think the Mythbusters watch this. I don't think they even know I exist. In fact, I'm pretty sure they don't. Yeah, so I'd, I'd have to plan out. There's a map of the hacker spaces on the hacker space website, isn't there? So 
I could sort of plan out, maybe I can do all their legwork of, of you know, contacting hackerspaces and getting it send, send on to the next one and stuff. Um, yes, I'm friends with Jerry Ellsworth. She's a mate of mine. I've never met her, of course, just like I've never met Chris, but uh, no, she's a mate of mine. Jeez, that's freaky. I turn her... <laughs> now I know what my wife was complaining about. My wife made me remove it from the house. It was freaking her out. She was... She was, you know... <laughs> it was either it leave or I leave. One of the two had to leave. It was, it was freaking her out, yeah. And I just turned around and holy shit, there's a person there. So that's, um... Yeah. Oh, no, I should leave it in shot. Maybe I'll leave it in shot. For the, for the rest of the show. There you go. Why not? It's not, it's not doing anything in the corner. Although, it'll, no, it'll put... No, the stupid camera's going to focus on both faces, I think. So, yeah, that could be... That could be annoying. My main camera, that is. I can... Because it's got face tracking, face follow. <clears throat> so... Ah, oh. yeah, so Jerry's a mate of mine. Can I make a video about safety essentials? What sort of safety? Mains, safety? Keep one hand in your pocket. Or don't work on mains gear. That's how I do it, I just don't work on mains gear. Or if I do, you know, you have to be very careful if you do. I've already done something on, you know, how to not blow up your oscilloscope and stuff. So I've already done a video on that. Um, please do a video on switching regulator layout and other things to be considered while designing switching supplies. Oh yeah, I could. Um, pretty much just be duplicating what's in the data sheets, though, and the app notes. If you look at any, almost any DC to DC converter data sheet, they'll have, usually a good one, a good data sheet will have a section on layout, high frequency layout choosing the best component and you know how to how to keep a tight loop it's all about loop it's all about loop area and the main loop like you know for a boost converter is through the inductor through the switching transistor and down to ground and through the output cap it's all about and you keep that loop area tight and it goes back through the ground plane and through the power supply you keep that loop area nice and small and tight that's the way to do it that's what it's all about can I provide any tips on checking, tweaking, calibration of a Cronheit MV106, which is what I've got, the thing up there with the knobs. <clears throat> checking, tweaking. I just bought one and was about to take it to my friend's wall of... Take it to my friend's wall of six and a half digit meters. He's got a wall of them? Wow. Um, no, I don't... Um, know about... Well, checking, obviously. You've got a... Uh, tweaking, though. I don't know about the tweaking part of it because I never had to tweak mine it was spot on I bought it from eBay and it was absolutely spot on as you saw in the video um, so I've never had to tweak mine so I don't know about tweaking sorry um, but uh, checking yeah you've just got to have a cow lab to to check it against I was lucky enough to have a cow lab down the road and I can uh, I can check things Would it break my heart if Sagan grew up to be a plumber instead of an EE? Plumber with the bum crack showing. <laughs> pair of thongs and stubbies and thongs being <clears throat> sandal flip-floppy for you Yanks who don't understand what a thong is. Um, or you think it's a, it's a G-string, it's not. Thong is a pair of thongs put on your feet. Flip-flops. We don't call them that here. Don't come to Australia and call them flip-flops. You'll be laughed at. <clears throat> And I would I be disappointed? Yeah, I want him to be something better than just a trades person, but you know, I'd still be proud of him either way. But uh, no, I expect he'll get into some sort of no, even if he becomes an artist or something. I don't know. I I just want no, I want him to do something creative. I'd be I'd be I think I'd be probably be fairly disappointed if he didn't grow up to do some sort of create something creative at least or something technical or something creative um and actually you know i i don't want him to grow up and just be a you know a trades person 
Uh, yeah, Super Squad, Sniper Squad, don't touch the uh, live and neutral wires on anything. You'll get yourself killed. Man, be careful. Those uh, 12 volt DC to AC inverters, they're lethal. They can kill you. Be very careful. Never use two hands for starters. Always use one. That's why I said before, keep one hand in your pocket. And <clears throat> that way, you know, the idea being is that if you keep one hand in your pocket, if you touch, you know, if you're holding onto the chassis with one hand, for example, you know, which is earth, and then you go and touch, you know, you accidentally brush or touch something that's live, it's going to go right through your arms and right through your chest and down to earth, and you, you know, there's a good chance of dying. So, if you keep one hand in your pocket, at least, you know, when you've got your rubber shoes on or whatever, at least, you know, you're going to get a zap, but hopefully you won't die, and hopefully you've got an earth leakage circuit breaker. If you don't, get one. Oof. Can I, uh, hang on, whoop, 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 stop scrolling window. Annoying thing. <clears throat> How did I make my Paper Dave? It's a, oh, it's a plastic, it, it's a cardboard, it's a cardboard laminate. Um, there's an online shop, cut the uh, life size standups.com.au. Life size standups. So, yeah, you just send them the image and they they make it for you and they cut it out. And <laughs> it's neat. I love it. Six foot tall. It's taller than I am. <laughs> it's about 1.1 smoots or something tall. <clears throat> What is the best starter kit for beginners who want to start with Arduino? Oh, I don't know. I'm not up on the Arduino kits. Go to uh, John's site. He's got uh, tons. He, he, he reviews tons of those Arduino starter kits and things. At Tronic Stuff. I'll point you there. Tronicstuff.com is the best for Arduino beginner stuff. He's a mate of mine too, John from if he's on. Don't know if he's here. I doubt it. He's too busy working. We've got 121 guests and still 83 viewers. Wow. Hey, uh, uh, sorry, mad hun. What? Can you please walk through your work experience? Ah, oh, yeah, it's all in my LinkedIn profile, or most of it, I think. Uh, my work experience when I was seven. I got my first professional job at seventeen. Um, that was at Pacific Communications. Um. A security company who developed slow scan TV security systems and other, you know, uh, multiple camera switching security systems, um, all based on the Z all based on the Z Z80 processor. Um, and uh, that was yeah, I worked there for three years, I think. And I went back to study, and then I. Uh, I Got a job. What was my next job? My next job was was it ABI or KeyCorp? I can't remember. It's been that long ago, <laughs> early nineties now. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I uh, garden. I worked at um, Australian Defence Industries for a little while until I got jack of that and left. Um, then I was at KeyCorp. For um, who did uh, KeyCorp designed uh, flat screen TVs, so I was working on flat screen monitors. Sorry, not flat screen TVs, flat screen monitors, which were a big deal back then. Like, you know, back in the we're talking 1994, I think. Um, uh, yeah, actually designing a flat screen monitor, right, which we take for granted now. You just plug in the VGA and it scans it and everything. You know, it's all in a single chip, it all does it, right? You've seen my seen my teardowns of the monitors 
and there was one, one little LSI chip and that's it. Well, back then it was a whole board full of chips that had to all be done manually. There was no LSIs for this sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot different back then. So I was working on flat screen monitors. That didn't last long because the, uh, the company retrenched, you know, they actually retrenched half the company. Um, and uh, I was one of them, so I went. Um, and what was after that? Uh, that was uh, then I went to GC Marconi, um, working on uh, Sonoboy stuff. GC Marconi. I started out as a one-month contract there and <laughs> never left. <laughs> um, and that morphed into um, that morphed into GC Marconi became. Thompson Marconi Sonar. So I worked at Thompson Marconi Sonar for a while and then that morphed into Tallies. That, that, that became Tallies, the French company Tallies, the French defence contractor Tallies. And then the Tallies role became, uh, then uh, they were bought out, well the division I was in but was bought out by Surcell, so we became Surcell. Uh, which is another French company, geophysical company, and uh, Surcell, I was there for quite a few years, and then Altium after that. Altium after that, and that, that was it. Then I got the ask from Altium, now I'm full-time video blogger. I think I haven't left any out there. There might have been the odd, um, there might have been the odd one, but they were all my full-time employment ones. I did a few little, like, little short-term contract stuff in there as well. Um, but they weren't full-time roles. Well, actually, a lot of those roles were contracting, but I was a full-time contractor, if you get my drift. Like, it wasn't just, I wasn't just hired for one little task, and that was, you know, please do this task for us and bugger off. Um, it was sort of more of a a full semi-permanent contractor basis, if that makes any sense. Whew. So there you go, that's my work history. I think I got it all in there. <clears throat> hang on, hang on. Too many questions. How long am I going? Oh yeah, please. Um, don't let me go over time. Shit. Thanks. Seven thirty. It's almost nine thirty. Yeah, well, it's it's ten past nine, twelve past nine. Holy crap! Don't let me go. Um, cause my amp hour radio show is. Hang on. So, yeah, sorry, there's probably 15 minutes left, 20 tops. Um, don't let me go over. Chris will be pissed. Or well, maybe we should do it just to, <laughs> just to annoy him. Uh, boy. Oh, I'm getting a warning that my bandwidth is low. Not sure why. Not sure what's going on there. <clears throat> and when the bandwidth goes low, we start getting dropouts on the frame rate and stuff. So, oh, holy crap, man. It's two hours of answering questions. Um, next, uh, we'll see a laser. Will we see the laser expert again? Yes, Phil, my brother-in-law. Um, is he okay? Yeah, yeah, he's doing fine. He's back at work now. Um, he's back at work. Maybe, maybe you'll see him on Wednesday. I'm not sure because uh, Roger's coming over. Rog, who you may have seen on the blog before, he's coming over on Wednesday, and we're working on the quadcopter. Finally, it's Kenyan season again. And, but he's, you know, I've been busy and he's been busy working on a, on a new startup. He quit his job and is working on a startup and he's had no time. So neither of us have had time to work on our Canyon Copter. But he's coming over on Wednesday and maybe we'll stream it live. Maybe we'll just leave the camera going and we'll work on our quadcopter. And Phil's got Wednesday off as well, So, but I'm not sure if he's coming. So, but yeah, yeah, he's doing okay. He's doing a lot better. Uh. How much did I spend on my MV106? Um, it was like 15 bucks. <laughs> it, 
it cost more to post it than it did to buy it. It was like all oh, 10 bucks or something, 20. Oh, it was so cheap. Um, but yeah, postage, I don't know how much postage cost me. 50 bucks or something. So that's what I spent on my MV106. <clears throat> oh, he's got a HP 3457A, okay. Uh, refray, can I make videos about safety essentials so the designs won't create lawsuits? Well, unfortunately, standards are different in different countries. I mean, basically, if you want to avoid a lawsuit, <laughs> use your best, you know, it, unless you do something deliberately stupid and you know it's unsafe, um, you're, you're really not going to get, it's, you know, it's hard to sue someone if they use their best profession. If you're a professional, you use your best professional judgment to design something, you get it certified. The other big thing is it must be certified by the relevant authorities and if the relevant authorities certify it, you know, um, unless you hid something in there deliberately, you, you're really not going to get sued. So, you know, um, yeah, it's all about certification and stuff, really. So, yeah, I can't really do a video on that because all countries have different certification laws and all sorts of things. It's really hard. Um, Want to buy a multimeter in the 200 euro range? I Yeah, the Agilent 1272A, I think. Oh, the U40, U, U1241B is okay. Deckham, but yeah, the if you can afford the U17, the, um, what is it, 1270A is a really good meter. Would I consider doing a Stanford AI course style electronics tutorial in collaboration with a few hacker spaces? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, sorry. Uh, it's a series of one-week courses with a small automated quizzes at the end. Yeah, sorry, I don't know the format. Um, when and would I recommend going from microcontrollers to FPGAs? Um, when you need to. Um, if you're doing parallel anything that requires massively parallel tasks or something like that or utmost parallel speed, you know, things like that, switch to FPGA, but otherwise microcontrollers are cheaper, simpler, easier, you know, I, yeah, um, I think if you need an FPGA, you, you'll know it. If you don't have the grunt to do it in your microcontroller, well, that's when you move to an FPGA. But really, because you can't just move from a microcontroller to a an embedded microcontroller in an FPGA. It's not going to be any quicker. Really, it's it not. You can buy faster microcontrollers than you can embedded cores for FPGA. So you really need something that, you know, parallel processing or some other aspect that FPGAs are good at. Um, you know, if you've got 30 incoming serial streams and you've got to decode them all at once, for example, you're not going to be able to do that in a microcontroller in real time you know, high-speed serial. So that's where FPGA, you know, you can have 30 different little decoding cores in your FPGA, and that's what it's useful for. So that massively paralleled, huge number of I.O. kind of tasks, that's what FPGAs are good for. Um, how did I land my first job? My first job was through a consulting company, like a, through a, we call them consulting companies here, but they're actually a recruitment agent. Um, yeah, so, turn around again, that's freaky, man. So yeah, um, there, there was an ad in the paper back then when you actually looked through the paper. There was no internet back then, right? I'm talking late 80s, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm talking, you know, <laughs> late 80s here, so there was no internet. So it was all, you know, you look through the paper. You bought the Saturday paper and you looked through the engineering section. They had a small you know, there'd be a small engineering section and you'd look for electronics engineers and it turns out I had no idea what a recruitment consultant was. I thought I was calling up the actual company. You know, I thought, okay, I'm working for such and such. I'd be working for such and such, the jobs at such and such company, you know. And, um, and I think it was like OU Norman 
I wonder if they're still around. OU Norman was the first recruitment consulting company I got my first job at when I was 17. And, um, yeah, and I thought, okay, I'd be working for OU, OU Norman. You couldn't do any research on them back then. There was no internet, right? It wasn't that easy. So I phoned them up, and I thought I'd be working for OU Norman. And I went in there thinking I was going for the job interview at a company called, an engineering company called OU Norman. And he, and I went in there, and I'm looking around. There's no gear, you know. It's just a bunch of suits in a cubicle, and, you know, and uh, <laughs> I'm going, what the hell kind of company is this? What do they make? They don't seem to make anything. They don't seem to design anything. And then I found out what <laughs> recruitment consultants were. And uh, that's how I landed my first job. So that, yes, those evil recruitment consultants. <clears throat> how long have I studied engineering in school, uni? Probably five years, five and a half years total. Long time. More than more than most. <clears throat> Who was that? Floodens. No, how much would I how much screw sorry, Felix. I haven't got time to answer technical questions now. I've probably only got ten minutes left. I want to get through them all. How much screw you money would I recommend? It depends. I what whatever it takes to live for six months, at least six months, that's how much screw you money I would recommend you have. I think I mentioned that in my video on screw you money, where, where I mentioned it, mate. Yeah, like six months. So whatever it costs in your country, in your city, to live for six months comfortably, that's what I would recommend for screw you money, minimum. Because really... Finding another good technical job can easily take three, four months, easily. So, you know, allow a bit of buffer in there. So you can, if you're fed up with your job, just go, screw you, I'm quitting, you know, just walk out, and, um, and yeah, and if it takes a couple of months to find another job, well, fine, you're covered, you know. Or if you want to take, or, you know, I'd recommend probably more than that. If you can get 12 months behind you, awesome. Take a holiday. <clears throat> Stay, stay live while I record the amp hour. Ah, oh, maybe. <laughs> What's the strangest thing you've had in your post mail Monday? Ah, oh, was the was the G string. Whoop de do. Not that exciting. Still got a couple of more mail bags down there. I haven't opened. Do I scan? Oh, there's a question for everyone. Do you scan eBay, etc., for quipped randomly or for a specific part of gear? I've got a couple of watch... I, do, I think I've got them mostly now, but I've got a couple of watches on eBay where I watch for a specific model of gear that I'm specifically after. So I'll put a watch term and I get an email when, whenever it pops up. But otherwise, I'm just randomly surfing eBay. Um... Singira, what do your work today? Do you work on yourself or only the blog? <laughs> this is my full-time job. I sit in my lab here and I make videos. This is my full-time job. I don't have anything else. I don't contract for anyone. I don't do any of that anymore. This is my full-time job. And I love it. Yeah, I, I mentioned that before. Clefail. Yeah, Doug. Yeah, he should be on again soon. I don't have any more footage um, shot, but Doug said yes, he wants to come back on. And if you email him and encourage him to come back on, he'll. And he's got a few topics he wants to talk about. So he's keen to come back, and I'm keen to have him. So I'm sure you'll see Doug again. Is there a country I would like to work in as an engineer besides Australia? Oh, gee, I don't know. I That's a tough one because, like, engineering's the same. doesn't matter where you go. I mean, engineering's engineering, right? You work in an engineering company, you know, everyone will say, oh, I want to go to Silicon Valley, but eh, whatever, you know. Um, 
No, but you know, I wouldn't want to live and work in the US. No, it's a nice place to visit. Wouldn't want to live there. Um, Canada, New Zealand. I've said before, if I'd live in another country, apart from Australia, it'd probably be New Zealand or Canada, perhaps. Very similar. Well, it's pretty cold up in Canada, right? It's not that good. It's pretty cold in New Zealand too. I mean, either way. Um, but they're, they're sort of countries that I could see myself living in. England, maybe. I, I do enjoy England. Um, <clears throat> oh, shockwave flash has crashed. My chat window has crashed. Hope my recording's still going. No, I don't think I'd be allowed to be a US citizen. Whoever said that. Let me refresh that. Alright. Yeah, I'm back in. We've got 75 viewers and 109 guests. Oh, thanks for showing up, everyone. It's been... I can't believe it. It flies. Like two hours. Just under two hours. Doing what? Answering a couple of questions. <laughs> I should do a Kickstarter. Send me on a US hackerspace tour. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd love to. I'd love to go on a world hackerspace tour. John, but I have a wife. I have a kid. And I don't think she would let me. Oh, to be single again. Yeah, like, seriously, if I, you know, if I was, if I was single, if I was not married and didn't have a kid, I, you know, you would see me there a lot more often. You'd see me all over the world, I would suspect. I'd be going everywhere. But I, I just can't up and leave, you know. It's, it's not that easy. Bugger off, IRC. Where can you find Doug's email? It's on his website, dfad.com.au. dfad.com.au. Ah. It's logged me out. Am I in? Am I in? No. Ah, chat window's crashed. Stupid. Man, you think Ustream would have sorted all this shit? There we go, I'm in. You should be able to find his email address on there. Yeah. Thanks, Clefail. Guy in your engineering class looks exactly like young Chris Gamble. <laughs> Has he got sideburns happening? <laughs> hey, Chris is in, is he? It's Chris here. There he is. There's Chris. Chris Gamble in the house, folks. He's probably pestering me that I haven't updated or added anything to this week's show list. So I assume it's us this week, is it, Chris? <laughs> yeah, I should... Well, that's why I wanted to finish half an hour early, so I could do the last-minute rush thing like I always do and add some shit to the, to the list. Yeah, I plan on doing videos for the DSA 815. Joe it. Yeah, I'm a slacker. Um, yeah, that's why. Yeah, the 815 spectrum analyzers aren't as easy to review as oscilloscopes. I mean, even oscilloscopes are hard to review. Like, you know, you really can't do a decent oscilloscope review in under an hour. And that's just an oscilloscope, right? You know, a multimeter, a good multimeter review will take 40 minutes. A good oscilloscope review will take an hour. And I, I don't know, I haven't reviewed a spectrum analyzer before, but there's so much to cover. Actually, I can't possibly cover everything in it. So I I don't know what form the spectrum analyzer review is gonna take. 
but I'll almost get hammered. I am almost certain I'll get hammered by people. Well, why didn't you check this and this and this and do? Oh man, I, I'm I'm not an RF guy, so I'm not going to be able to test every freaking aspect of the spectrum analyzer. So I don't know. Yeah, it'll happen eventually. Um, I'm just putting it off. <laughs> do this amp hour live. Hey Chris, everyone wants me to uh, stream this amp hour amp hour recording. <laughs> Oh boy. What's my thoughts on the UT61E? Um, it's getting... I, I've never seen one in the flesh. So I can't comment firsthand, but um, I've seen inside it. It looks okay-ish. Its feature set looks good. Value for money looks really good. The guy who's written the new software on the EV blog forum for it, that looks really good. So it's probably the pick of the $50 multimeters at the moment, or around that price level. So it seems to be the pick. Um, Sniper Squad, you cannot get my USB micro power supply. It's not finished yet. No one can buy one. No, I don't speak a foreign language. Sorry. I speak Strine. <clears throat> Speak Strine. Strine. <laughs> strine. That's what it's called. If you look up Strine, that's Australian. <laughs> yeah, it's enough foreign language. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Oh, how do I get my hands on the high-end gear? Sorry, I missed a few questions up there. And uh, I, uh, they send them to me. They send them to me. They want me to review them. They send them to me. Under the condition that... Uh, well, I, under my condition, that they don't get to see the video beforehand and I can say whatever I damn well like. And they all seem to accept that. Those who don't accept that don't send me gear. Simple as that. Um... Hey, people are asking Chris questions now for the amp hour coming up. And we we did get the t daylight saving time right, didn't we, Chris? Is it, We didn't get it back to front. It It is correct. 10 a.m. my time is now the regular time over there. Yes, I usually get to keep them. Not all of them. Some of them have to go back. Yeah, yeah, there are once once my blog got bigger, KF. Um, yeah, I've now got companies want to send me stuff because they notice that well, I'm pretty much the biggest in the industry in terms of views and uh, viewership. So yeah, they all seem to want a pro they all seem to want a piece of that. And there's still a few who approach me that want to under their own terms and conditions. You know, we want to thoroughly vet the video and comment on it before you upload it. And it's like, no, piss off. No. <laughs> That's not how I roll. If you don't like my terms and conditions, bugger off. I don't want to review your gear. If you want to be an anal retentive and you want it just to be some marketing video for you, bugger off. You're already getting enough marketing. Haven't you heard the mantra that any publicity is good publicity, even if I call it crap? I mean, come on. I'm not just going to, unless it's really totally trash, I'm not just going to call it trash. I'm going to say, this is good, this is good, this sucks, this sucks, this is good, this sucks. And people can make up their own mind. That's how my reviews roll. Man. But yeah, some of them want me to turn it into a market, you know, some polished marketing video they can use on their web page. Piss off. Don't even bother approaching me with that sort of crap. <clears throat> No, tech, no, Mike. Tech have never spoken to me again. No, they apparently weren't impressed with my review of their DS4, uh, what was it, the MDO scope. No, I thought that was a balanced review. I thought that was, you know, everyone said, everyone who watched it said, yes, it was good, it was spot on. You 
said it was a heap of shit because it was slow, and you said it was really good because of the MDO capability. And that wasn't good enough for them. Once again, Tech were one of those ones, I think, who wanted the perfect marketing video, you know, where nothing was negative, and I just raved and raved about how wonderful their new MDO technology is, and well, yeah. I did rave about how wonderful their new MDO technology is, but it also had issues, and the scope is based on ancient architecture, and I said so. Dickheads. I don't care if they don't talk to me again. That's, that's their problem. <laughs> it's not mine. <clears throat> if, I, if I want to review tech gear, I can always get a loaner from someone, you know, if I really want to. So having manufacturers tell me to bugger off it won't stop me at all if I actually need to... Re if I want to review their gear, so screw them. <laughs> Have I had any problems after tear down of the scope I shouldn't open? No, none. No, I've never torn down anything and blown it. No. Tech were really anal about that. Tech were so concerned that I would blow up their $40,000 oscilloscope. They didn't want me to tear it down. And I finally convinced them and said, look, I'm not going to do a review unless I can tear it down. And they finally relented. They finally found somebody who signed off on it. And that's why I did the joke at the end, dropping the thing. Because they were just, yeah, they were being a bit anal. <clears throat> Have I ever written or said F you to any bosses? Yeah. I do it all the time. I used to do it all the time. I was a pain in the ass. I, you know, I spoke my mind. Just as I do on the video. Even, you know. So, I, I don't think I've ever used the F word. I, I don't, I try not to throw around the F bomb. I do, well, I do, I do a lot. But I, I try not to. I try to be a bit more civil than that. So I'll say, screw you. Or screw that. I, no, I, I never really attack the person. I, I, you know, that's, I, I don't attack the person, I attack their idea, or their question, or their, you know, if they ask me to do something, I'll, and I think it's stupid, and I'll tell them why, you know, I, I won't go, you know, F you, you're a dickhead, you know, no, I won't, I won't tell them that, because, um, you know, I don't think it's right to attack the person, because there's some bosses I've absolutely hated as a boss, but I think, you know, and I tell them so, and I give them such a hard time, but I, but I, you know, I thought they were an okay guy, you know, I, you know, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd have, happily have uh, lunch with them, you know, I, you know, go on a canyon with them or something, they're, you know, they're, um, but yeah, so I never attack the person, I, I always attack the, I always have something to say about their approach or their idea or their suggestion or whatever, so... <laughs> Can a manufacturer sue my ass? Um, in theory, I guess they can. They can do what anyone can sue you for anything. Anyone can attempt you attempt to sue you for anything, whether or not they'd be successful, um, is is another thing. I mean, the only thing I'd ever get sued for really is um, slander, is personal slander, and. A lot of people ask, well, why don't I have a company so that I can then, I've got no li limited liability in that respect. It doesn't work like that. Um, when, when I do a personal video, there's no corporate law which would protect me from personal slander. So if I slander a company and um, uh, do that, yeah, they could technically sue me. They'd be an absolute fool to do it because I would then take that live to the world and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, their name would be mud if they sued me. They, I, I think they, you know, they they would not hear the end of it from me on my show, and it'd be foolish for them to do it. So, and I don't think I personally slander. I tell the truth. I to give my professional opinion. I'm a professional. Um, well, now I'm a professional journalist, right? I'm I'm a professional reviewer. I'm a professional blogger. So I give my professional view of something um, when I review a product. I go, this is shit. This is crap. This is, that's not personal slander. That is 
That is my professional opinion. Take it or leave it. And I usually think that I'm pretty on the money with that sort of stuff. So if I said something untrue, you know, um, then yeah, they could sue me, but I don't make untrue accusations. So no, I, I think I'm pretty safe from getting sued. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm surprised I haven't had like a manufacturer maybe tell me to take a video down or something, but it doesn't mean they can stop me. And it's hard when you're in a different country as well. Like a, a US company would have a hard time suing me because I'm in Australia. You know, they'd have to have a subsidiary here, which then sued me. So, <laughs> so yeah, I haven't been sued yet. It might happen one day. I don't know. And then that'd be fun. Well, <laughs> it'd be fun to take them to task anyway. <laughs> if they, 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 they can't stop me making a review. They can't stop me making a review. Nobody can stop me making a, sue me and stop me making a review of their product. If I go out and buy it or get a loaner, it's not going to happen. <clears throat> so 9.40 guys it's almost time to wrap up thank you Seymour Logger he says I rule I rule what? my little kingdom here? <laughs> my 50 square metres? yeah damn right Carl Pilkington's bullshit man. I have no idea what that is. Could I do a future blog about rant stories of annoying co-worker habits in the industry? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Perhaps. I'd have to remember them. There's so many. No, very few people sue for slander here. I mean, that's... No, we're, we're not a very libus... That's the correct pronunciation of the term. Um... Uh, you know, we aren't sue happy, for example. No, you know, if, like, if some manufacturer doesn't like a video, I'm, and, and there's some aspect, and, and if I think they're correct, then I will remove it or edit it, for example. Um, like I just pulled the recent um, video on um, the uh, Tin Whiskers thing, right? I put up the Tin Whiskers video. I had permission to put it up, but they weren't happy with the amount and type of material I put up. And they asked, and they kindly asked me to review, to remove it, and I complied with their wishes. You know, because they're the ones who kind, kindly let me, you know, I wasn't, they kindly let me shoot the thing in the first place. I wasn't going to tell them to piss off. No, nah, I'm going to upload it. I don't care what you think. So, you know, I do take people's opinions, especially if they're, you know, um, well, like, for example, um, Fluke. A very early video, I think it was the review of the 189. I reviewed the 189 multimeter and I put up the schematics, the circuit diagram for it in the video. And I didn't know that that was proprietary information. That service manual, which I managed to get my hands on through a co worker, was designed only for the military or something, you know, it, it, like it was not for public consumption. And I didn't know that. And Fluke kindly asked me to remove the video, or not, yeah, edit the video, um, to, to remove the schematic. And I thought that was a per perfectly reasonable request. I didn't know it was not a publicly available schematic, for example. So I edited the video, I had to delete it, edit it, and re-upload. So the latest upload there doesn't have the Fluke schematic in it. So I thought that was a reasonable request. So I'm quite reasonable, I'm not just going to tell people to piss off. If they have a legitimate gripe about one of my videos, it will be considered. But if it's just my comment in a review, no, nah, if it's just my personal opinion, they're not going to get that edited. No chance. That's why I don't let them, um, I don't let them view the video beforehand, because then they'll go, oh, we don't like the way you said this, the way you said this. Well, screw you. I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Uh, I, I've got to go, guys. It's like quarter to ten. Do you have to give a warranty for the products my sell? Ah, oh, yeah, you know, there's a natural implied warranty. I'm a nice guy. I don't abandon people. But no, I don't say, oh, it's got a 12-month warranty. 
you know, I don't say that, but, you know, if it breaks down, eh, contact me, you know, if it's a failure due to something in the manufacture of it, then I'll certainly, um, certainly set you straight on that. So, yeah, I've got to go, go oh, 2 a.m. here, <laughs> radio man. Thanks for, uh, <laughs> yeah, Chris is going to do the amp hour on his own. Yeah, I've got 15 minutes left. I've got to go prep for the, uh, got to go prep for the show. And, uh, so thanks, guys. Good night from Israel, Singira. Trying to get some food. Yeah, <laughs> I need some food. It's 1 a.m. in the Netherlands. Cool. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hope you, uh. Enjoyed it. Two hours of just Q&A, as usual. Don't show off anything. I don't do anything. <clears throat> I feel like it's a waste, but I don't know. We had 73 people logged in and 103 guests. So we had well over 200 at one stage. Well over 200 people watching. And this will be uploaded, I hope. So, um, still recording? Yep, it is. So thanks, guys. <clears throat> Good night from the Netherlands. Good and Morgan. I can't pronounce that. Good night from Germany. <laughs> See you, Zadsta. See you, Mike. Yeah, it's got to be late there in the UK. Keep up the videos, mate. We're going to have to do a, a collaboration soon. We're going to have to collaborate on something, I think. And we're going to have to get you on the amp hour as well. If you want to come on the amp hour, let us know. Because we need, to, well, we've got some guests, but we need a guest for next week. We're still trying to organise one, but we need, uh... Q&A or in-lab stuff. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Once I'm thinking about getting a multiple camera set up, like another second webcam, and I can switch between webcams, and maybe I can just leave a camera here and just not actually do a, do, transmit live, but don't do a live show question and answers where I interact. I'm just working on... A project or something and you just happen to have the camera on um, and glance at the chat occasionally. I might do it this Wednesday when we're working on the quadcopter for example. Um, so yeah you need to sort audio. Yeah audio is important. Yeah you at least need an external uh, mic. You've got to have one of those external um, you know either a headset, head, headset mic work okay or a desk mic. It's all about the audio. Yeah, if we did a collaboration, if I do collaboration videos, it'll probably have to be through Google Hangout, which I'm still not happy with. The quality is crap in Google Hangout. So, I don't know. Maybe we can do something. Alright, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'm out of here. It's quarter past, it's like 12 minutes to 10. I'm on my way, Chris. <laughs> All right. Catch you later, guys. I'm going to stop recording a new stream. Uh, live show, 8th of October, 2012. So, I saved it on Ustream. And... Sign on off, guys. Catch you next time.